Sex Nearly Killed Me Part 2. Please uh, watch Part 1 first, but this is Part 2 of how I very nearly bled to death because of having sex. So let's pick up the story where we left it. It's Sunday evening. I've just been told that the hospital have managed to get hold of my travel insurance and that I will be going to theatre on the Monday morning early to have a camera inserted into my penis so they could have a look into my bladder to find out exactly what was going on. Monday morning came round and they prepped me for surgery. All these forms I had to sign and of course you have to be very careful because it was all in Thai um, and there was pages of it and you know when you have travel insurance your insurers say to be very careful what you actually sign but they did say to me if you don't sign it we can't go ahead with this investigation. I, I, I couldn't even tell them what exactly what had happened because I really at this point didn't know what had happened. It's only afterwards that I could look back and start putting two and two together. So I ended up in theatre, um, the usual rigmarole, 10, 15 people all buzzing around you and I was laying on this bed and there was a big TV screen and they said to me, would you like to see? Um, they tried to explain as best they could what was going to happen and that they were going to have a look into my bladder to try and find out where the blood was coming from. They didn't know where the blood was coming from. They were concerned at this point it was coming from my kidneys or somewhere else and emptying into my bladder and then it was pouring out of my bladder. So they produced this small snake camera with a light on the end. Um, they showed me it. they could move it around and look left and look right and they showed me around the room on it. I saw the doctor put some lubricant on and insert this camera into the end of my penis. I could watch the TV screen as the camera with the light on the end went into my bladder and my urine was clear. It was quite obvious there was no blood in my urine at all and they had a look around and everything was perfect and they were a little bit confused as to where the blood was coming from and how come there was so much of it. All along I was, had no pain, none whatsoever. Uncomfortable maybe but no pain until he's decided to pull this camera out. Oh my goodness, the pain. It was like somebody was trying to pull a red hot poker out of my penis. It was severe. I screamed. They grabbed me to hold me down as he pulled this camera out. For some reason, I hadn't felt a thing on the way in, which is a bit strange. But as soon as she, he started pulling that camera out, my goodness, was I in pain. I was screaming. So as he pulled the camera out, you've got a, a muscle at the bottom of your bladder. And all I can think of is I through the pain I tightened that muscle and he was struggling to get the camera out. It was like my muscle was gripping that camera. We still didn't know, he still didn't know where this blood was coming from. He slowly pulled the camera out and oh my goodness, that's when I saw it. What was happening is because of the amount of blood on the way in and obviously I was still losing blood, as along with the light there was a small tube where they could insert some water to flush the, the lens of the camera to make sure they had a good picture. So all of a sudden this water that had been cleared suddenly turned red and you could see as the picture cleared this flap of skin in my urethra. Urethra is what carries the urine from your bladder out of your penis. So as he pulled the camera out you could see this tear, this flap of skin that was just hanging at that I later found out was caused during sex when I must have slipped. Somehow I torn my urethra and that is where the blood was coming from. As he took the camera out again it was shooting out. They applied pressure to try and stem the bleeding again. The surgeon left the room and said to me that's obviously and now we'll have to look at what to do about it. So they all left the room apart from this one chap who came over to me and he had perfectly good English. And he said, um, now that everybody's gone, I want to tell you this happened to me about two years ago. Exactly the same thing happened to me. He said, I ended up with a tear in my penis from having sex with my wife. Exactly the same as what we think happened to you. Either the angle was slightly wrong or you slipped from this position that you were in. Your penis bent and it tore. And he said, basically, you just have to wait for it to heal. I asked him would it affect me long term and he said probably not. It certainly didn't affect him 
but he said look after your mental health he says because the next time you think about having sex the next time you think about having an erection you'll get flashbacks and it could be very very painful for maybe a few months you'll be worried that you'll be bleeding you'll be worried that this could happen again you'll have to be a little bit more careful for a few months anyway they decided they weren't going to do nothing about it apart from give me some gauze and some bandages and some advice and send me on my way. So again we had to wait around until the bill was sent to my insurers and we were locked into our hospital room and not allowed to leave until the bill was paid. Seven hours went by sitting in that room. We had no clean clothes, we had limited money on us because of the panic we left the hotel in. I hadn't shaved, I was weak, I was feeling so sick. I, again, I had had no medication whatsoever. Really, really disappointed that it took so long for our insurance company to get in touch with the hospital and sort things out. So seven hours we waited and eventually they came in and said, yep, here's the bill, go down to the reception and you have to pay a percentage of it and we will release you and your insurance company have assured us that we'll get payment within 24 hours. They'd arranged for us to have a taxi back to our hotel and that was added on to the bill. So we were escorted down to the finance department where we paid a significant amount of money. Thank goodness that we had travel insurance. I was still extremely weak and extremely sick. They did give me a certificate to say I was fit to fly but they told me the minute I flew back into Scotland I must go to the nearest hospital. We left and we got back to our hotel. The next few days I was so weak, I was so ill, I could hardly walk, I was managing to eat and drink. Um, for four or five days every 15-20 minutes I would have a small bleed. Every time I went to the toilet I would have another bleed. It was nothing like what I'd had I was uncomfortable, the urine seemed to be stinging where the, the tear was and I really wasn't in a good place at all. We flew back to Scotland on the Friday, that was the following Friday and I did go straight to my doctors and explain the situation to him. I had been given a small report to give to my GP when I got back. So physically and mentally it had a huge impact on me. I was very, very lucky that I did not bleed to death. It has left a huge mental scar on me that I still get nightmares for. I get flashbacks. As for the physical side, I'm completely healed and functioning normally. The mental scar has taken and possibly will take a lot longer. So that's my story. I hope you never have to go through what I did. I hope you realise now how important travel insurance is. I hope you realise now that no matter how embarrassing or uncomfortable medical problems make you feel, you need to seek some professional advice. If I can sit here and share this story with you, you can do this. You can share whatever you need to share with whoever you need to share it with. If you are stuck, just think of me sitting here putting this my story out on YouTube. I hope my children never get to see this because I don't really want to scar them. I hope my friends and colleagues won't look at me any differently. But more importantly, I want you to know I'm not looking for any sympathy whatsoever. Be aware these things can happen and always, always get good quality, good quality travel insurance. I have since received an apology from my travel insurers. I did take the matter up with them when I got back and they admitted that there had been an error and it did take them far, far too long to sort it out. I had a written apology and I had compensation um, and they assured me that it was a very unusual situation. So please, before you go on holiday, get good travel insurance. Read through your insurance. Don't just buy it and throw it in a drawer. Make sure you take a copy with you. As for tearing your urethra, apparently it's it's more common than 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 I ever realised. Um, so just be aware these things can happen, but hopefully it doesn't. Thank you for listening. Um, thank you for understanding. Um, I post new videos, not as long as these, every Wednesday. 
please, I'm not going to ask you if you enjoyed this, but if you can appreciate what I've been through and I'm sharing it with you, please comment, share this video with somebody who might need to see it and consider subscribing to my channel. I always welcome feedback and, and any comments you can give me are more than welcome. Now don't forget, as I always say at the end of my videos, if you don't take some time to take care of yourself, you won't be able to take care of anybody else. Until next time, thank you.